What is going on guys? In today's video I will show you the best new pillar stance build in Black Meat Wokong. So this build's main objective is to offer an incredible amount of range damage, while at the same time give us a massive amounts of defense. This new pillar stance setup is essentially the most tankiest build in the game, while at the same time we can dish out a serious amount of DPS. I've reached level 150 and from playing this game twice now, this is definitely my best and most favorite build. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So, let's take a look at our setup. And first of all we have the transformation. And the best one to use is the Golden Linning. Because it gives us increased defense, HP and reduced might depletion. Transformations don't have anything to do with the stances. And that's why you're free to choose whichever spell you want for your build. The Red Tides transformation is also a great choice. However, it doesn't have as much defense as the Golden Linning which can be an issue against some of the endgame bosses. Then as far as the stances go, for this build as the name implies, we of course will mainly use the pillar stance, with a bit of smash stance as well. And the best talents are the steel pillar, sweeping gale, skylarking, churning gale and the towering mountain. These upgrades not only enhance the damage dealt by the pillar stance combos, but also makes it much easier to perform them. Additionally, the talents like the Sweeping Gale offer a crowd control option, which is sorely missing from the Pillar Stance base moveset. So this setup gives us incredible amount of damage and stunning potential. Next up, let's take a look at the foundation. And the most important talents are the Simenian Agility, Swift Engage and Composure. Furthermore, you'd also want to unlock the entirety of the Focus Chi, so that you can get the 4 Focus Charges. Focus is one of the key elements of this build since the bulk of the damage is coming from the charge heavy attacks. Thankfully, you can respect your talents at any time by using the Keeper Shrine. So, for example, if you were using a Trust or a Smash Stance focused build and want to make a switch to the Pillar Stance, then you won't have to make too many changes. The only major work you will have to do is transfer all the points from the other stances and over to the Pillar Stance tree. Next up we have the Curious. And for this build, the best Curious is the Gold Spike Plate, Gold Sun Crown and the Jade Moon Rabbit. All of these Curious offer a passive defensive boost, which will help us in survivability, especially at the end game. Gold Spike Plate will increase our defense, and also deal moderate amount of damage to the enemies when we take damage. Then the Gold Sun Crown increases damage bonus and attacks followed by a spell or a spirit ability. And lastly, the Jade Moon Rabbit increases the damage reduction. Then afterwards we have the Spirit, and the best Spirit for our build is the Upper Mana Bat, which deals a ton of damage, offers much higher defense against AOV attacks, and also inflicts frost damage. Furthermore, the Upper Mana Bat also freezes enemies in place for roughly 30 seconds, which gives us enough time to dish out a massive amounts of damage. Then for one of the last parts of our build we have the Relic. The main Relic that I recommend is the Craving Eyes with the Eagle Eye. When we successfully hit an unveiling strike, the cooldown of our spells is massively reduced, and I will explain this even further in the gameplay part. Then next up we have the gear and the items that we should use. So for the mask we want to use the Bull King's Mask. This will grant us moderate focus upon taking damage. And if we get staggered, then we will get even more focus on top of everything else. Then for armor we get the Monkey King chest piece. Then for bracers, the Bull King's Bracers. And lastly for boots we use the Bull King's Greaves. Among all the options in the game, the best armor set by far is the Monkey King set. But it can be only obtained during chapter 6, after you defeat the 4 great beasts in the foothill area. And that's why for this build you will see me mixing the two best sets. So the Monkey King set and the Bull King's armor set. Both of them are great, but usually players start in the mid game acquiring the Bull King set. And then in the end game the Monkey King set. Our endgame goal is to get the full monkey set, because this armor set offers high defense and variety of stat boosts, as well as synergies for spellcasting and critical hit chance. On top of that, the set bonuses are for 3 and 5 equipped pieces of gear. This is because the Jingumbang is a mythical weapon, which is considered to be a full part of the set. But in the meantime, to get our full godlike build, we use the mid-game god build, which is the Bull King's armor set. This is primarily due to the extremely high defensive stats, including the set bonuses, that boost this attribute even further. If you want to know what it feels like for the enemy hits to tickle you, instead of doing real damage, then these gear pieces are the right pick for you. 
And if you want to get this equipment, then you need to complete the chapter 5, Secret Area Objective, to acquire the necessary crafting materials to make this set. And also, in the meantime, before we can get the mythical weapon, we will be using the Pike Shaft Staff, which gain focus upon seeing through an enemy or by using combos. And last but not the least, for the choice of vessel, we are using the Plantain Fan. This will increase our stamina regeneration and also summon a massive tornado that pushes back and staggers enemies. Next, let's move over to the best spells, and we will mainly use the Immobilize, Cloud Step and a Flock of Many. Immobilize lets you stun enemies, keeping them in one spot, which is useful even against tough bosses. You can make the stun last longer, and deal more damage, making it a critical spell for controlling single targets. In this setup we will focus on the talents like the Stagnation, Crash and Easy Prey to get most out of the Immobilize. Then our Cloud Step spell is useful as well, for the mobility aspect of creating distance away from the boss. You can use it both to attack or escape, and with the right talents it can boost your critical hit chance or serve as a surprise attack. It also pairs well with a stamina based dodging for quick and agile maneuvers. For Cloud Step, the best talents are the Gallop, Converging Clouds and the Concealed Observation. And finally, we have the Pluck of Many, which creates clones for yourself, but it uses a lot of mana and has a long cooldown, and it is not very effective overall. Plus, casting it takes a while, leaving you vulnerable. So, it's better to save your mana for more useful spells, like the Immobilize and Cloud Step, and only use the Pluck of Many occasionally. One good time to use it is before a fight, when you need a distraction to start off your combo. But if you do use the Pluck of Many skill often, then consider getting the Long Strand, Grey Hair and the Synergy Talents. These will help you to make the duplicates last longer, and be more durable in harder boss fights. Next up we have the Gourds, and the best one for our build is the Trailblazer Scarlet, because the first sip will replenish our HP to full. Moreover, you can add additional effects with soaks and drinks, giving you even more usefulness from this consumable heal. Alternatively, in mid to end game sections, you can also use the Supreme Gourd, which can be upgraded to carry up to 10 healing charges, which is enough to get you through some of the toughest boss fights. And now last but not the least, we have come to the gameplay part. Every boss fight will be different, but I will try to summarize the overall experience. The pillar stance is all about defensive play, and building up your focus charges. Unlike the trust stance, you don't have any swift counter attacks, so our only way to counter attack enemies is by using spells or the pillar stance upgrades. The sweeping gale as well as the skylarking are some of the most useful talent upgrades that will give you a fair bit of offensive options on top of the pillar stance defensive perks. Additionally, using the immobilized spell or the upper mana bad spirit skill also helps a ton when it comes to building up the focus charge heavy attacks. It should be noted that the bulk of your damage in the pillar stance is going to come from the charge attacks and not the varied combos. So, heavy attacks with the Skylarking or Towering Mountain are our primary ways of dealing damage, and our priority in combat should be to build up focus charges, either way by using the perfect dodges or successful attacks. Pillar Stance build offers an excellent range, but only if you can charge the heavy attacks in time. Additionally, with the Pillar Stance, you can basically avoid all ground-based attacks, as well as AoEs, as long as you have at least one focus charge. So, make sure that you're not running out of stamina while using the Pillar Stance Towering Mountain skill. And don't forget to use the Cloud Step as well as the Immobilize, because they are crucial to ensure our survivability, especially during hard boss fights. And that's about it. So, if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. And I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.